you get a Game Gear, you recap it, and gag at the smell of fish. It's just standard procedure. <laughs> Years. They're great, yet so flawed. The year was 1990 and the Game Boy was huge at the time, being released the previous year in 1989, but it had a shortcoming. The screen was monochrome and difficult to see outside of well-lit areas. They tried to remedy this with magnifying lenses with lamps on them that attached to the top, but that defeats the purpose of it being portable. You can take it on a date! Sega wants a piece of the handheld market and they reckon they can destroy the Game Boy by going all in with a backlit colour screen and more advanced tech inside. And they really went for it in their marketing. Just watch this. <sighs> Whoa. Colour. Hey, there's an easier way to get color. Get a Game Gear, the full color portable with over 150 games, like the new Echo, Mortal 2, and Sonic Triple Trouble. Sega! With this idea, what could go wrong? Well, the Game Boy already had a head start, and Nintendo was pretty much a household name at the time from the success of the Famicom and the NES, so they had a huge percentage of the market. This is as big or bigger than anything the toy industry has ever seen. The Game Gear was also more expensive and didn't have as many games available, comparatively to the Game Boy. There was also the issue with the battery life. It was abysmal. Just goes to show that power isn't everything. Ultimately, the system failed to get as much attention as the Game Boy did. You can take it to the game! But it put up a good fight. At least a better one than Atari and their Link system, which also released a year before the Game Gear and was pretty much the same idea. A backlit color screen with a lot more power, but it suffered mostly the same issues. The Game Gear was discontinued seven years later in 1997, but it's still got a nice following today. The Game Gear is still cool, but one thing we in the community know now is how unreliable they can be internally. Most of the time the capacitors inside are bad or going bad, the screen may have issues and the sound might just be gone. A working one is great fun until the batteries die in 5 minutes, so in short the Game Gear is difficult to enjoy if you don't take the necessary steps to maintain it. Here's one I got from Japan recently in the post and initially it would only power up for one second then turn straight off. But with the sound and brightness turned all the way down, it will stay on. When it does stay on, it reveals a very badly damaged LCD with both horizontal and vertical lines, and testing it with the game reveals that there is no sound, not even a little pop from the speakers when you turn it on and off. The power and sound problems can be fixed by replacing the capacitors, but will the screen be fixed by that? I doubt it. I think it's gonna need to be replaced. It's gonna be a nightmare. Six Philip head screws and one game bit screw later, we carefully flip the top side backwards to reveal three sets of cables to remove. Now the two halves are separated and we can inspect the capacitors on all three boards. Immediately and predictably, there's corrosion on pretty much all of them apart from the power board ones, which I've read to be more reliable, so that's alright. You can clearly see leakage on the soundboard from this capacitor. It's all wet on the top. To avoid melting the shell by accident with my iron, I remove the screws holding the board in and carefully remove it. The screen is on the other side, so I'm putting it down on this microfiber cloth to avoid scratches. My attempt at replacing the first capacitor on the main board could have been more efficient, but I got better as I went. I also learned not to breathe in as the rancid stench of fish from the leaky capacitors filled the air. Oh god. <coughs> the casing of these capacitors seem to be glued down, which makes sense, but when trying to remove them they just disintegrate, and it's really annoying.
I cut the legs of the replacement capacitor to length and bend them to accommodate the pad spacing, before soldering them in place after fumbling around because they won't stay still. Now, on to the rest of them. All the solder joints were really stubborn across the board, being corroded and all, but with some patience and encouragement they all came off. I thought it would be a good idea to remove T1 from the board to get to this capacitor more easily, but that turned into a much bigger problem. I don't understand why this particular component is so hard to remove without breaking it. At least I replaced the capacitor, but now I don't have a working backlight. The leaky audio board capacitors bullied this screw into a dark place indeed. But we can help it out with some therapy. I mean, vinegar. White vinegar. Now on to the soundboard. This board is much easier than the main board, and even other soundboards I've seen in later Game Gear models. I quite like the way the caps are laid out. Five replacements later, and it's great. Did it fix the audio though? <laughs> of course it did! Nice and loud too. Remember, without T1 in there, the backlight does nothing. That is why the screen is black right now. On to the easiest board, the power board. This uses through-hole capacitors, so they're much easier to replace, at least for me. Testing it again shows that it still works as good as it's able to at the moment. Oh, what are you doing, cat? Until I get a replacement component for T1, I can't see the end of this work, so I hit up the Game Gear Collectors page on Facebook in the hopes that help will show up, and after a few hours, I got a message from a really generous fellow in France, who said he'd give me a T1 for the cost of shipping. But what did I really get for that cost? The package arrived, and inside we have this container. Ooh. We didn't just send the T1 component. You sent two of them. And... Two spare screens. For how much? The cost of shipping. If you're watching, thank you so much. And that's what generosity looks like, in my opinion. The solder left in the T1 location is incredibly stubborn. But I get it out eventually and stick one of the new ones in, which works fine, as the old screen powers up again. Now, I just want to try something before I take the screen out. Yeah, sometimes if you heat that chip up on the right side of the ribbon with an iron, you can bring the screen back temporarily, and in this case it's very temporary. Not worth it at all. But it looks pretty nice. I've been dreading this part. The idea of desoldering and resoldering a 68-pin ribbon cable is not a nice one to me. Someone who's never done it before. But learning doesn't come without mistakes. Ew. 
A generous trail of flux covers the edge as I apply the heat from the iron to one corner before pulling it upwards. You want to know what temperature my iron was at? Too bad! I have no idea! There's a chance I might have done this a bit too quickly, but I was really nervous. Hey. At least all the pads on the board are still intact. Can't say the same for the ribbon though. Poor thing. Aligning the ribbon of the replacement screen was difficult. Having to check the alignment of 68 pins and keep them still is easier said than done. With more flux and solder at the iron's tip, I tack in the first few pads to lock in the position, which turned out to be at an angle. But you know what, I don't think any of them will be shorting out, and I really don't want to desolder what I've done already. Am I even going to do this correctly? Is my soldering method suitable? Please let me know. I think they're all connected. Keywords, I think. They all look to be connected now, so I position the screen in its place and reassemble the system to a point where I can test it out and oh god! No, that definitely won't do. Well, I'm gonna try this again. Okay, let's see what it does this time. Ooh. Oh, that's much better. Still the third on the left side is um dimmer than the rest yeah, you can just about see that though pressing down on this makes it completely clean let go, yep put it down look at that oh I'm excited I'm gonna give it one more go okay it's attempt number three Ah, there's just no winning. <sighs> Let's see if it works this time. This is getting pretty tiring. Hey, there we go. Hey, that's more like it. I remember I still don't have the sound connected. And there it is. Nice and clear. No problems to speak of. I am happy. Now I can put it back together. Oh yeah, let's check the vinegar screw. Definitely not that gold colour anymore, but at least it doesn't resemble dirt. Before the final case screws go in, I'll just test it one more time and see if for crying out loud! There we go. There we go. One thing to note is that I don't get the produced by or licensed by Sega Enterprises Limited at the beginning, so is this a non TMSS? I think it is. There we go. Factory K, 1991, run 6, and 62,014. This is the 62,014th, is that right? Of run 6, of 1991, from Factory K, which I think is in Japan. There we go. As you've just seen, this is not a particularly easy thing to do, especially on your first try. I'm lucky to have done it on my first try, with a few practices of course. But I thought I'd end up frying something, like my house. And with that, I have another working Game Gear, and though it took some time, frustration, and at times, fear, I think it was all worth it. Time to put it on the shelf, and not do anything with it for a few years. If you like this sort of thing, then please consider subscribing or even just letting me know in the comments because I will continue to make these sorts of videos, either for your enjoyment or just to spite you. I always appreciate the support and the criticism, but for now and as always, 
I'll be back in 16 bits. What are you playing this thing for? It's got all the games, it's got the colour screen and the backlight screen, it's got everything. You can download, save, delete your save games, delete every... Play great games like Wimbledon Tennis! <coughs> Game Gear! Buy right now from the, from the market, $399, but absolutely free, that's right. Absolutely free, no questions asked. Every down, download it right at Game Gear. Dagger!